All right, you asked for it, you got it. Uh, usually only post videos of Netrunner games uh, if they're really good games or if there's something to learn from them. Uh, but people requested that I post some more, and I don't have any really good ones to post right now. So the video on this one came out well, and it's a silly one. So let's watch this silly game of Netrunner and see what happens. On the left, my opponent, Riel Kit Peddler. On the right, there's me with this really silly NBN deck that I put together to be thematically uh, consistent. And it's not really uh, a deck that's going to win. I mean, it can win, uh, but it's not really, I would say, tournament quality. If you took it into a tournament, you would probably just die. Uh, pretty quickly. So let's see what happens. I'm not going to spoil for you the silliness of this deck, but maybe you can see in my hand uh, and figure it out. Starting off with the old install, install, install. Challenging Kit to use her ability right away before she gets some code gate breaking action. Will you run that unrezzed car? Oh, sure gamble. That'll get you some money. It's actually not a bad idea uh, against MBN to play a sure gamble before running, because odds are you're going to see an expensive to trash card. If it's an unprotected card like that, it'll be, there's a private contract, but more likely you'll see a marked accounts, uh, and those are not cheap to trash. So if you're not wizard, uh, and the corp, especially NBN, uh, installs an unrezzed, undefended card on turn one, use your, don't run it on the first click, get some money first, uh, and then run it. That way you can trash it. Don't lose a click that way. He chose not to spend his credits trashing it. Not the worst move. Um, he could trash it, say, after I res it and spend my three credits on it. But if I res it and use it three times in one turn, that'll be a net gain of three credits for me for three clicks, which is the same as clicking for three credits. Uh, and if he trashes it then, uh, after that, see, here's like, exactly what I'm doing. Is I resed it for three, I use it three times, I get six credits. So that was basically the same, right, as clicking for three credits. But now next turn, I can click three for six. So if he trashes it now, uh, that would be a good idea. He wasn't really, he didn't need to trash it when it was face down. He put his uh, Cyber Cypher in R&D, so once per turn he can run that and, and get in easily, uh, but it's a Data Raven. <laughs> See, so it turns into a code gate, okay, you still have to take a tag or end the run. He does, he takes a tag, he spends his one credit to break Data Raven, and he sees an agenda, breaking news, one point for him. Uh, he better remove that tag if he knows it's good for him. He does so. No tags on Kit. So he can only do that once per turn. If he were to run R&D again, uh, the Cypher Cypher would be useless because that Data Raven would be a sentry. Kit's ability only happens once a turn. And he would have to take another tag, which means he would need another free click to remove it. And he would have to worry about that trace on there giving me a magical token uh, that would allow me to give him a tag at any time. So he installed an Atman, and how many counters is he putting on the Atman? Three. He chooses three, knowing, I guess, most ice in the game are three, even though he's just seen an ice of four. <laughs> so he's better, he better hope I have some three strength ice. You know, I haven't played the Atman deck a lot, so he didn't trash my private contracts. So money, 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 money for me. No point in trashing it now for him. I've already loaded up. 
but I'm of the opinion that the first admin you should install should be the Strength Zero admin. And even though there's not a lot of Strength Zero ice, Rototur is Strength Zero, and that can show up in, in a lot of decks these days. And you just want to be able to take care of that. Also, nobody can undercut you. I've seen a lot of admin decks get ruined uh, by someone installing, say, an Ice Wall of Strength 1, and even though the Data Sucker can bring the Ice Wall down, all their admins are 3 or 4 strength, or 3 or 4 tokens. So they can't break the Ice Wall, even because the Data Sucker only decreases the Ice. It can't decrease the Atman. Atman. However you want to pronounce it. Atman. So, um, alright, here we go. Setting up a little server here to challenge him and his 3 strength Atman. Uh, and his cyber cipher that is aimed at the wrong server. This is a nasty data rip. He has a daily cast going, if you didn't notice, to get some money. But that's going to take a while, uh, which is why I challenge him, right? If someone installs daily cast, they're down on money that turn. So, especially when his credits are so low, what does he have other two or three, right? If he just installed daily cast, that's a good turn to install something and say, run this. You just put your money into the long haul, right? You're not going to get your profit back for another turn or two. Uh, let's see you run now while your profits are down. Your economy is low. You made a long-term investment. So during that long-term investment, I'm going to mess with you. Maybe score something in this circle. Goes for HQ. There's a Draco there. And I'm going to set that Draco at strength zero. Because he's got a strength, uh, he's got a three token Atman, Atman, and a Cyber Cypher aimed at the wrong place. Uh, and his economy's low, so I challenge him. Uh, the Draco not only ends the run, keeping him out of my hand, but gives him a tag. So now he's got to remove that. Or make his economy even lower. He does remove it. Really, I, I just love giving the runner a tag. Uh, that they feel they have to remove, even if I can't capitalize on it with a closed account or a score or anything like that, because, or even trashing a resource. Uh, because they spend a click and two credits. It's like, you think of Enigma. Enigma is click and the run. They lose a click and the end the run. Data Pike, lose two credits and the run. Draco is take a tag and end the run. Assuming they remove the tag, that means that they have to spend a click and two credits and end the run. Totally awesome. So on my turn, I installed, rezzed, filled the marked accounts, and did a non-mandatory draw, saying, hey, come trash this, Mr. Poor. Uh, drain some more of your money so you can't afford to run other things that matter. Or I'm going to keep my economy up. Uh, he plays a sure gamble, so he's sort of back in the money, at least temporarily. And he runs R&D. And then I res my dedicated response team. So the timing of this works like this. He runs R&D. He says he's taking the tag. He takes the tag. He's behind the data raven. He has one last chance to jack out. If he says, no, I'm not jacking out, I am accessing, then that means he can't back out. And I have one last chance to res cards. That's when I res dedicated response team. Dedicated response team says, if at the end of a successful run, the runner has a tag, they take two meat damage. So he took the tag from the data raven, and then he ended the successful run. So we got two meat damage. Pew, 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 pew. So basically, now that this is resed on the table, if he his only choice is to run and trash the dedicated response team until he does that so he must do that if he does not do that then every time he runs through that data raven he is going to take two meat damage which is not sustainable period for any runner he could see he's going to go try and fix it now uh, and there's a tmi so what i do here is i set the trace on the tmi i forget what math i did but I set it such that if he pays to beat that trace, he will not have enough credits left to uh, trash the dedicated response team. So the TMI will derez. I won't try to res it again. He'll get through, and then he won't be able to trash the dedicated response team because his money will be gone. 
But yeah, the only other ways around this are if he were to use Inside Job or Femme Fatale on the Data Raven, then he would be able to get around it uh, without taking the tag. I guess he could also parasite the Data Raven uh, into death, into the archives, um, or use some other sort of criminal tricks of, you know, when my economy's low, he could try to de-res it, and then he could use forged activation orders. As long as that Data Raven's there, he, and, and the dedicated response team is rezzed on the table, he will take two meat damage every time he runs through a Data Raven. So, in that other server that he couldn't really afford to run at all, I scored an Astro script. Choo choo! All aboard the Astro train. So yeah, if he runs and trashes the dedicated response team, he would not... that would, that would clear it up, right? Uh, he just can't get through TMI right now in his current board state. Uh, so he can't do that. But even if there was a data raven in front of the dedicated response team, that would be pointless, because he would take the tag, succeed in the run, trash the dedicated response team, and then there's no dedicated response team to give him any meat damage uh, anymore. So he would, he'd still be tagged from data raven, but he, the dedicated response team can't defend itself on the turn in which it is trashed because it does its damage at the end of the run which is after the dedicated response team is trashed if it said something on it like do the damage when there is a successful run then it could actually deal damage before it was trashed which is why it says what it says so I refill my marked accounts I install a new card in my extra remote server He's got a self-modifying code now, but he's still low on money. Katie Jones is probably going to fix that really soon. He's also got a clone ship. I'm not sure if he's thrown any programs in the trash. Maybe I got some with my meat damage. I wasn't really paying close attention to that. I was just so happy that the dedicated response team setup actually worked. It's so rare to actually get this set up. Uh, most of the times, if you try to do this, it'll just get trashed immediately if it didn't get trashed in HQ or R&D and actually made it to the table. And when it does make it to the table, uh, it usually doesn't actually result in this board lock situation, right? Um, usually the runner can just, you know, worm their way out of it, trash the response team, avoid the tag. So here what I do is I was super lucky I had another Astro script. Crazy lucky. Astro train, and I install, advance the Astro script with a credit, and then I advanced it again with the previous Astro script, and it was on a San San that I spent all my money on, which means it scores. Uh, it has enough to score, so I got a new Astro script, a new Astro token. That's why it's a train chain, and then I had one click remaining because using the Astro script token does not cost a click. Uh, it's just a paid ability. So I use my third click to take a credit. And I was explaining that to uh, my opponent there. He empties Katie Jones, now he's got money. And he's got a self-modifying code. And he's got an Omni Drive. So now he can run places. So he runs that server with the San San in it. If he, he knows if he leaves me a res San San. Uh, that I'm gonna just win. So he does. He spends his Katie Jones money trashing with my two credits. I could not uh, res that ice. If it was a Data Raven, though, he would have had to take two meat damage if he wanted to trash that Sand Sand on that run, which would have been hilarious. But I couldn't even res it if it was a Data Raven because that costs four credits, and I have two. I guess it could have been a Hunter for one credit or a Drake. But it wasn't. If it was a hunter, he would have been forced to encounter it. But I couldn't set the trace very high. But his money wasn't that high either. Maybe I could have set it high enough so that he would be too poor to trash the sand sand. Uh, so here we go. My extreme, extreme luck in this game. Another Astro script. All three. One, two, three. That happens never. Never does that happen, except for this game. Complete Astro Train. 
Uh, that time I did have to spend my whole turn, all three clicks, advancing it twice, uh, and then using, of course, the third, the astro, the previous astro ship token to advance it the third time, which does not cost a click, to score it. So now, if I draw a breaking news or a project veal, I just win the game. Uh, unless he runs HQ and takes it from me. Now, it does take two credits to score the Project Veal, if that's the one I get, instead of the Breaking News. I only need to have one credit to score the Breaking News, because it only requires two advancements, and the second advancement comes from that third Astro script. But I'm going to get a credit from my marked accounts, so either one. So here he's going to run HQ, last ditch effort. Uh, he sees a toll booth. So he, he, he scavenged his Cyber Cypher to HQ and ran there. Yes, he was thinking if he could pull an agenda out of my hand, I wouldn't be able to score it for the win. But his kit ability only allows him one run. If he runs HQ again, uh, then that Draco would go back to being a sentry for that second run. So I'm explaining to him, he, used, he got his Data Sucker after the run, which is kind of silly, because he could have gotten a counter on it. Uh, you know, virus counter. So I'm explaining to him, look, you can use that self-modifying code during that run, right? As soon as he, you know, breaks the Draco, he can then use the self-modifying code to install the data sucker and get the token. Uh, so in my hand, yes, indeed, there was a Project Veal. That's game over. Uh, I'm showing him this now, how lucky I was in this game. When he ran and got the toll booth, my hand had two private security forces and the Project Beal in it. He had a three out of four chance of getting an agenda on that run, a one out of four chance of preventing me from winning the game on the next turn, uh, and one out of four chance of toll booth. <laughs> he got the toll booth. Super crazy lucky game. Uh, if you didn't notice, the theme of my deck is guys with guns. That is my favorite way to win at Netrunner, is private security force dedicated response team. Just pew, 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 pew. Just get the guy tagged and That's just start so shooting. Him. Just ton of damage just raining down. It Thematically, it's just fun, especially the private security forces. Pew, 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 pew. Sometimes when I score the private security force, I forget to use it. And sometimes when I do remember it's there, I just I spend every turn shooting, shooting, shooting. Pew, pew, pew. To the, you know, neglecting everything else. Uh, and sometimes runners, if they have like Diesel or some other card draw, Wild side, especially, uh, they can withstand it long enough to run all the things that I'm leaving vulnerable uh, while I'm shooting them, right? Because while I'm shooting someone, I still have to mandatory draw, you know, put stuff in the discard pile. You know, once my hand gets over five, uh, and of course the deck, the only uh, influence is three snares and three response teams, right? Snare is the ultimate combo with response team because they'll make a run, they'll think it's safe. This dedicated response team, but there's no data raven. They didn't get a tag, and if they hit a snare, boom, that gives them the tag. Then the run's over. So the snare gave them three damage, and the response team gives them two more. Uh, that could kill them. Uh, very well could kill them. I hope you enjoyed this silly game of Netrunner. You won't see too many uh, like this one. Have a good one.